Okay, good morning, crew. Well, uh, things are lining up for some uh, challenging weather in Florida for tomorrow's launch. Uh, taking a look at the current weather that's out there, uh, we see that there is a great deal of moisture that's uh, flowing into Florida uh, from the south, and that's in association with a uh, surface trough and also a uh, surface low down to the south in the Yucatan Peninsula and a tropical wave in the area as well. There's quite a bit of activity that's going on down there right now. Uh, by tomorrow, the uh, low that's down in the Yucatan Peninsula is expected to move off to the north towards Florida, and uh, we expect the tropical moisture to remain in place uh, tomorrow. And we have uh, quite a bit of concern for showers and thunderstorms in the area uh, for launch tomorrow. Out west, just taking a look out west for uh, Edwards and White Sands, we have uh, Building in from the Pacific Ocean for uh, Edwards, we have high pressure that's building in. They actually have had some weather out there the past few days, uh, but conditions are expected to improve for tomorrow uh, for the PLS opportunity, and uh, we don't expect any issues for uh, Edwards weather out there. Uh, for White Sands, we also have high pressure there uh, off to their north, and uh, we don't expect any issues for uh, White Sands either. Taking a quick look closer in to Florida, you see there is quite a bit of shower activity that's streaming up from the south. Uh, in fact, the uh, shuttle landing facility just uh, reported a light shower there at the uh, runway. Uh, expect the coverage tomorrow to be a little bit lighter than today, but we'll still see uh, really scattered rain showers and thunderstorms near our 20 nautical mile standoff. So. Uh, there's quite a bit of concern for that for tomorrow. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the forecast map for tomorrow. Just wanted to kind of show you a visual of what I was mentioning earlier. Uh, that low pressure area that's down in the Yucatan Peninsula currently is forecast to move off to the north and uh, be in the eastern Gulf of Mexico. And we also have a low pressure area off uh, to the northeast of Florida along the Atlantic coast. And uh, really, just the tropical moisture that's funneling up from the south is going to be the main concern uh, in association with those two low pressure areas. And so uh, we're going to have uh, scattered showers and thunderstorms that will be seen uh, throughout the morning. Uh, and we'll just work it really hard for you. Uh, as mentioned, high pressure out west, so no concerns at Edwards and White Sands. So with that, we'll go ahead and take a look at the forecast for tomorrow for launch. Uh, the RTLS forecast. Some scattered clouds at 3,000, uh, broken deck at 8,000, and broken at 25,000. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see some uh, broken ceilings at 3,000 uh, coming in and out during the morning. But at this time, I'm not real concerned with, with the ceilings overall. I'm mainly just concerned with the showers and thunderstorms uh, within 20 nautical miles of the SLF. Uh, winds will be out of the south-southwest, 210 degrees at 8, peaking to 13 knots. and. Uh, for the AOA forecast, there's really no change in the weather expected, so same forecast for AOA. Edwards PLS opportunity, just a few clouds at 8,000 feet, and winds will be uh, out of the southwest down the runway, 2.30 at 10, peaking to 17 knots, so that's a go forecast. And Northrop AOA, uh, just a few clouds at 12,000 feet, and light southeast winds. And that concludes the, uh, the briefing for launch day tomorrow, unless there's any questions. Uh, no questions, Brian. Um, you're going to give us the good news now? I'd, I'd love to. Uh, we'll just uh, see how things pan out tomorrow, and we'll work it as hard as we can. All right. Thanks so much, Brian. Uh, it is what it is, and uh, we are looking out the window. It's a little cloudy, and it uh, looks like a little showery, too. Yes, sir. It's good to get ground truth. That's me, Bernie. Um, you know, it is, there is a lot of activity. It is dynamic, but uh, is there any chance of uh, I guess applying a rain shower exception to their flight will allow? Uh, we will look at that very hard, and uh, we'll see what we get tomorrow. But uh, like Ryan was saying, tomorrow might be a little bit better, and uh, if they cooperate, you never know. Okay, got me. Thanks, uh, Richard. Okay, um, let's, let's go on to... Uh, Hey, good morning, crew. Take a look at the uh, satellite picture here for Spain and with high pressure over the area. See all the clear skies uh, over Spain and looking real good at Zaragoza 
as well as down in Marone. And also expecting that for tomorrow as well. Really no uh, weather concerns for those two sites. Over uh, France today, there is a trough of low pressure over the uh, central part of the country, and that is bringing some uh, cloudiness and some rain showers and thunderstorms over that area, as well as a pretty strong south wind into Istris. So uh, we are seeing the tailwinds there gusting up to about 20 to 25 knots. But by tomorrow, that trough will be moving on to the northeast, and that will be bringing in some drier air as well as some lighter winds into Istris. And just real quick, uh, look at the radar picture for Spain, or excuse me, for France. You see the uh, showers and thunderstorms mainly to the uh, north of Istris, but also a couple of very light showers uh, in and around the 20-mile uh, standoff there. But again, this system will be moving on to the northeast for tomorrow, so looking for pretty nice weather at all three town sites. So taking a look at the forecast for the town sites for tomorrow, starting at Zaragoza, just a few clouds, good visibility. Uh, winds 330 at 9, peak to 13, so we'll see a headwind of 11 knots. Marone, clear skies, good visibility. Winds 310 at 7, peak to 10, crosswind of 10 knots. And at Istris, also just a few clouds with some good visibility. Winds 190 at 10, peak to 14. It's crosswind of 8 knots, a tailwind of 11 knots. If that wind is a little bit more zero, uh, to the 170 direction, there could be a little bit more of a concern with the tailwind. But uh, right now, uh, not really expecting that. So three good sites for tomorrow. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, Ronnie, uh, do you have any questions or comments for the telecoms? No, we got nothing else. Uh, Fox, two fish maker, thanks for taking the trip out there for us. And uh, we look forward to getting off on time here if we can. Thanks, Ronnie. Excellent. Okay, um, if I can just keep the telecoms on uh, before uh, we go, we'll, we'll come back and wrap up things with uh, with you guys here in a bit. Um, let's see, Fergie for for the eight for tomorrow. Uh, MC one is going to be non-critical, and uh, so with that, uh, lighting's good. We're going to be doing the, uh, the plus X pitches. No, I really don't. I mean, what we're seeing on satellite for today is really what I'm expecting for tomorrow over the Spanish sites and even less clouds tomorrow over Istris. So right now, I really don't have anything uh, specific for them to go out and, and uh, take a look at. Okay. Um, tomorrow, when you guys are airborne, if, uh, if it is as severe clear as we think it's going to be, uh, we'll just keep uh, our calm to a minimum and then focus all of our energy on, uh, on the CODIS weather to see uh, where we can get to that number. Uh, as the forecast is flying. So, uh, guys, thanks uh, again, and uh, let me go ahead and go to uh, CJ. CJ, you there with us? Yes, sir, fine, we're here. Leading in tomorrow. Okay, general thoughts are, I expect the, the motion, the general motion uh, of the showers to be from south to north, so we'll probably be head, having you head off 
okay. in, in, in the southern direction to kind of get an idea of how things are looking as they're approaching uh, the SLF and, and the launch pads there. Uh, I also expect the bulk of the activity to be offshore similar to today. So, you know, I'll probably have you heading out, like I said, down, down the coast to the south and maybe arcing around offshore to kind of see how things are, are shaping up as we go through the launch count. Yeah, basically for that, we're just uh, trying to avoid uh, any showers by uh, either uh, 10 nautical miles uh, laterally or uh, 2 nautical miles vertically. And so in that case, uh, we will want to, to get our typical bases and tops to make sure that the showers aren't growing uh, too large to, to the point where they're thunderstorm uh, criteria. And so that, that's kind of the, the bottom line with that. That's that rule there. Let me add one more thing there, Brian. Um, we have to have two approaches to any of either of the runways, one, one five or three three available to uh, with the standoff criteria that Brian and kind of talked about. So um, basically, if we kind of apply that rain shower exception, we might have showers in, let's say, the, in the southern half of the uh, 20 nautical mile circle with the top half uh, open. And under those circumstances, I think, DJ, we would be using you, your eyes, to make sure that nothing else was bubbling up. Uh, and you're saying do you have both a left and a right hack? Is that what you're saying? Because one of them would be more like a straight. Yeah, you? exactly. So we got more, more, all of those hacks would be under, uh, would be available. So for like the, uh, the, those, we would consider both maybe the overhead and per se, those could be our two available approaches that would be free and clear and on the mile that we end up ring shout. That's just an example. That sounds good, Blake. And then uh, it also sounds like with this cola thing that we may not have the 105 option of moving up early if we need to because we're moving in. It would still be an option, uh, but uh, I don't think it's going to be really hard to implement something like that. Too. I'm confident the kids need to manage the, the clock uh, if we even chose it. But going to the open with the dynamic that we're talking about, from the weather perspective, is just going to be really hard to do. It's all okay. weather based. Yes, sir. Uh, and then I did uh, hang up with John Casper yesterday, and I think we're still going to use the uh, L minus one hour cut for getting our dive in. Uh, so we'll look at range weather for a little while in the SBA, and then we'll go do the dive and then come back and finish up with range weather if we need to. Yeah, that sounds good. CJ, I think uh, you never know with respect to how the system is going to be behaving tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, we may have maybe a little bit more uh, less dynamic atmosphere. In other words, we're going to probably push this uh, to the very end if we need to. So, uh, yeah, getting things out of the way as soon as possible will be good. That way we can focus on, on your report. Happy to have We're ready to support. I don't think anybody has any more questions down here. Okay, great. Uh, I'm looking around here at the Capcom weather well, just right. We'll take that opportunity. So, um, anybody else have any questions before we let everyone go? Let's see, GT, go ahead and start breaking down the, uh, the weather briefing. And, uh, theory was I'm getting all my red out of the way today. I'll wear green tomorrow. Or it's a burnt orange. 